Thanks, Mike and Susan, for being here. Your words are very special to us. Uh, I, I want to introduce uh, the Secretary of Kansas Social and Rehabilitation Services, Rob Zedecki. Uh, while Rob is new to Kansas, he's certainly not new to work around families. In fact, for the last 15 or so years, and you'll wonder if you've seen how he's young. How could he have been doing this for so long? Uh, he's, been, he's been in the service of families and children. Uh, Rob is a graduate of Harvard uh, and got his law degree at Cornell University, and he's active in a number of organizations, particularly the National Fatherhood Initiative. And so we would like to invite Rob up, and he's going to give us a few words about his view of vision for Kansas families. Thank you. great to be here, and it's also a great day for Congressman like Mike Pompeo fighting for us in Kansas. He definitely doing great things and carrying a lot of the water for Kansas on our families drinking issues. So let's give Mike a round of applause. Thank you for having me here today. It's a great honor to be talking to you about strengthening families. Well, my name is Rob Seidlecki, and I'm the Secretary of the Kansas Department of Social Rehabilitation Services, or SRS. As some of you may know, SRS runs most of the major government programs designed to improve the well-being of children, families, and the disabled right here in Kansas. We have 42 local offices throughout the state and an annual budget of about $1.7 billion. One of the major new initiatives we'll be undertaking at SRS over the next few years is the Kansas Healthy Marriage Initiative, which is why I'm here today to talk to you. This initiative is designed to help those couples who choose marriage for themselves to develop the skills and knowledge necessary to form and sustain a healthy marriage. The overwhelming majority of Americans and Kansans view a successful marriage as an important life goal, and we want to help people achieve this goal. However, as most everyone here already knows, for the past 50 years, the institution of marriage has been in an unending tailspin in both the United States and Kansas. Since 1960, the Adelaide birth rate in this country has skyrocketed from 5% of all births to over 40% now. Today, 72% of black births, 53% of Hispanic births, and 29% of white births are out of wedlock in this country. And even family-friendly Kansas is not immune to this trend. Does anybody know what the out of birth rate is right here in Kansas? It's 38%, just below the national average, right here in the heart of town. In addition, since 1960, the divorce rate in the country has more than doubled. Indeed, America has the highest divorce rate in the entire industrialized world. Now, these increases in family breakdown translated to over 1.7 million children each year being born out of wedlock, and another million children seeing their parents divorce each year. Now, why should the breakdown of family concern me, and more importantly, why should it concern you? For one very simple reason. Because almost all studies from the left, right, and center show that children do significantly better generally when raised in a healthy marriage, mother, father, family. Whether you look at school dropout rates, child abuse rates, poverty rates, drug abuse rates, or almost every other measure, the research is pretty clear. Children generally do better when raised in a healthy married family. Now, I fully understand the challenges being faced by single parent families and the heroic jobs they do day in and day out, and I will always support them. But I also want to help more children grow up where possible in healthy, intact families so they can have a better chance of having positive life outcomes. Now, importantly, this initiative is not conde about condemning or criticizing anyone who could have had an adult hot child or divorce. It's not an initiative while well, I'll be preaching to people because I have a perfect family life. Because truth be told, I do not have a perfect family life. I've been divorced for the past two years. I tried to save my marriage all I could, but in the end, I wasn't able to do so. It's a tragedy that I have to bear for the rest of my life. I have two wonderful daughters that I love like crazy, and it breaks my heart that I can't see them every day, can't have dinner with them every evening, and can't talk to them into bed every night. So I'm supporting this initiative, not just because of the research, but also because I'm personally acquainted with the pain that results when families fall apart. And you may be asking, what exactly will the Kansas Healthy Marriage Initiative look like? Well, while we're still in the planning stages, there are a few things we do plan to do. First, we're going to remove the disincentives to marriage found in welfare programs. For example, <laughs> I don't often keep reminding me when I work at the DC 
One study found that if a woman with children making minimum wage marries a man making minimum wage, she could lose up to $8,000 in government benefits a year. I mean, that's crazy. How can something like that happen? Well, pretty simple. Some government welfare programs subsidize cohabitation rather than marriage by disregarding the income of a living boyfriend or girlfriend for means-tested programs for when determining tax rates. Should the couple marry, the income of both spouses would be counted and benefits would be either lost or diminished, and the couple's income most likely would be taxed at a higher rate. They say that whatever you subsidize, you get more of, and whatever you tax, you get less of. This is one of the reasons why cohabitation has been soaring and marriage has been declining rapidly over the past 60 years. We in the Brownback administration firmly believe that the government should be supporting the couple's decision to marry, not penalizing it. Second, we're going to be collecting statistics on a county-by-county -county basis in Kansas so we can know what our baseline numbers are in regard to adult and births, marriage rates, divorce rates, poverty rates, and the like. Because we need to know where we are starting from if we want to know where we have to go. Third, we're going to be doing a baseline survey of the attitudes of Kansans toward marriage, divorce, cohabitation, and adult and births. Again, we need to see where we are starting out from in order to know where we have to go. Fourth, we're going to take an inventory of the matter of resources available right now in Kansas. Such resources would include premarital programs, marriage enrichment programs, programs for marriage in distress, and the like. Because we need to see what resources we already have in order to adequately determine our needs. Fifth, we'll be putting together a public relations campaign that will let people know the facts about marriage, divorce, and cohabitation. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And we believe that once the general public knows the truth about the benefits of marriage to children, adults, and society as a whole, they'll be more likely to support our efforts. As they say, the truth will be the truth. Six, we'll be training our staff at SRS in the Healthy Marriage Initiative. If we're going to be successful in promoting and implementing the Healthy Marriage Initiative, our staff must understand and support it. Finally, we will be engaging in outreach to faith-based and other community organizations to partner with us. Many churches and other community groups already are doing a fantastic job running pre-marital education programs, marital enrichment programs, and community marriage policy programs. And the more people who know about these programs, the more people who can be helped. Significantly, local churches and local organizations have credibility in their communities. They know the people in their communities and they know the problems in their communities. I don't want a one-size-fits-all Topeka or Washington, D.C. solution for our community. I want to partner with local organizations to bring local solutions to local problems, especially those who make the challenge right now. And importantly, whatever we do with this initiative, we're going to attach a strong research and evaluation component to it. Because we need to see if what we're doing is actually helping the institution of marriage, rather than just wasting taxpayer money. Accountability for achieving results is a cornerstone of this initiative and of the administration. In conclusion, then, I just want to thank everyone for listening to me today, and I look forward to working with everyone here today as we put together the Kansas Healthy Marriage Initiative. It is only with your help and support that we'll have any chance of succeeding. And succeed we must, because the future of our children and of our society hands in the balance. Thank you, and God bless.